So what's up you guys? It's your girl Toyonce. How are all my love bugs? So today I will be doing story time. You know, I told you guys I wanted you guys to get to know me better and get to know me truly for who I am. And why not start with something that's dearest to my heart and that is my baby girl. So today I will be talking about how I lost my baby girl, um, how many months pregnant I was when I lost her, how sh long she lived, um, coping with it, and how I am now. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I found that I was pregnant on Christmas Eve. Yes, I was at work. Um, this is when I was working in Fort Walgreens still, and of course they had a million pregnancy tests, and I had had a dream the night before that I was pregnant, and I'm like, I hadn't missed my period yet because I wasn't really regular like that. I know that's TMI, but so what? And some just told me to take a pregnancy test, so I took it, and in two seconds it was positive. I didn't know whether to cry, dance, be excited. I didn't know what to do. Um, because it had been so many scares and so many tries and I just couldn't believe it. So I told, the first thing I did, this is when I was living in Dallas. My mom was in Chicago. Um, I was living in Dallas with my sister and I text my mom, I'm like, mom, I'm pregnant. She's like, whatever, Toya, stop lying. I'm like, no, mom. So I took a picture of the pregnancy test and I sent it to her of course, it was Christmas Eve, so it was family at the house. And so she's telling everybody, I'm like, oh, my God, Mom. So she's like, go to the doctor tomorrow. Go to the doctor tomorrow. Go to the emergency room, you know, to verify. So on, on next, I text my sister. And that's the one who I really wanted to text because she has been with me through it all as far as, like, the scares and, you know, trying. So she didn't believe me neither. So, of course, I sent her the picture as well. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm dancing around the living room or whatever. So... I was happy. Um, it's something I wanted for a long time. I couldn't believe it. Um, the person that I was pregnant by, we're not going to talk about him, but it didn't matter. I was happy I was pregnant. So my pregnancy was hard. Um, I was sick all the time. I actually lost weight while I was pregnant. I couldn't eat anything. I morning sickness, evening sickness, midday sickness. All the sickness you could think of, I had it. Um, it was just hard. It was hard without my mom being there. My sister did all that she could do. But, you know, sometimes you just need that mother love. And um, so about 20 weeks, I found out what I was having. I went to the doctor and I was hoping for a girl. My mama was hoping for a girl. My sister was hoping for a boy because we have a lot of girls in our family. So I went to the doctor and found out I was having a girl. Best moment of my life. I was super excited. I couldn't believe I was having a girl. I had names picked out. I was ready. You know, um, I called my mom. I tricked her at first. I was like, mom, I'm having a boy. She's like, oh, well, maybe next time. I'm like, maybe next time. Hold on. But uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I was going along with my pregnancy. Nothing was, nothing bad was happening. I was just having like real sicknesses, but there was no complications. There was no high risk pregnancy or nothing like that. Everything was fine. On May 2nd, 2014, I woke up with a lot of pains. At the time, I didn't know there was contractions because I have heard stories how contractions was the worst. It was, you couldn't take it, couldn't bear it. I was just having like, you know, pains and they would come and go, still not catching on that there was contractions. Um, it was just like pain in my back and I was like something was wrong and then I went to the restroom and I saw blood Immediately I my sister lived around the corner. I got in my car and I ran to my sister's house I'm like something is wrong Something is wrong and she's like, okay, let's go to the doctor. I go in her bathroom Bathroom my water break I'm like, oh my god, I'm panicking. I'm crying everyone who knows me knows I'm extra sensitive so I'm crying, I'm panicking, I'm calling my mom. My mom like, calm down. So I get to the doctor, you know, the emergency room, everybody's telling me to calm down, but how? How can I calm down? I'm only five months pregnant. Well, 23 weeks pregnant. How am I supposed to calm down? Someone please tell me. So um, they get me up in the room and they were like, well, you're, you, your water broke, you're in labor. 
And I'm like, how? I'm 23 weeks. What's going to happen? So they were like, you know, do you want to take extreme measures? Do you? Yes, do anything that you can do, anything that you possibly can do, you know, try to save her. So about her being only 23 weeks, um, they explained to me that the chances was very slim. I wouldn't try to hear none of that. Just do what you can do. So um, they took me in for emergency C-section and, um, and I gave birth, of course, you know. Um, my baby lived for two minutes. She was one pound and one ounce. And um, at that time, I it, it was I didn't know how I was going to make it, what I was going to do. I didn't believe it was happening. My sister was there for me. She basically took over, you know, because I wasn't me. She, you know, told the doctors what to do. And, you know, she held my baby. She held my baby when... You know, she took her last breath then. Because I, I, I didn't know what to do. My mom wasn't here. My dad wasn't there. Nobody was there with my sister. And I thank God for her every day because she really helped me get through it. But it didn't hit me until they put me back in my room. And they was like, well, do you want to hold your baby? No. No, I don't. You know, of course, I... I was mad. I was angry. No, I didn't want to, you know, go through that, you know, hold my baby for the last time, for the first and the last time at the same time. No, I didn't want to go through that. Um, my mom got on the road. She was here in Chicago. Of course, it's going to take her, you know, my mom and my godmother got on the road at the same time, you know, at, from Chicago at that time. But of course, it took them 18 hours to get here. But my dad came. And my dad, he's not the type to really deal with. He hates to see me sad or crying or mad or upset. So he didn't know how to cope with it at all. And I didn't. I didn't know what, to, again, I didn't know what to do, say, think. I couldn't believe it was happening. Um. Finally, I told my sister, I want to hold my baby. So I held her and I wouldn't put her down. I know that seems weird, strange. But I didn't. I held my deceased baby in my arm until my mom got there 18 hours later to take my baby out my arms. That for a while messed me up. I slept with my baby like this in the hospital on my chest until my mom came, of course, the next day. Um, I didn't care that she wasn't breathing. She was still a part of me. You know, and I wasn't ready to let her go. Um, you know, I can talk to you guys about it now, but for a while I couldn't talk about this without crying. Trust me, it's hard now to keep from crying, but you know. Um, but in the hospital when my mama took my baby, but when she gave her to the doctors, of course, she didn't take her, but she knew what's best for me, you know. Um, I cried. I cried, I cried, I cried. What else was I supposed to do? I cried. Um, I was still in disbelief, you know? And who wouldn't cry during that time or that moment? Or who knows what to do? You know, people was reaching out to me and saying, oh, God, don't make mistakes. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to hear about... God and it's a reason, it's a plan. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't. Who does? I was mad in, at God, including God. I didn't see anything. I didn't want to hear anything. I was angry. Um, but as time went on, I left Dallas three days later, came back home with my mom. That's the only person I wanted at the time was my mom. I felt she was the only one that can get me through what I was going through. Um, so I came back to Chicago. Didn't want to come back to Chicago, but I needed my mom. Um, for two weeks, I was bed bound because I had a C-section. Barely couldn't walk. Every time I thought about walking, I thought about my daughter because she was the reason, you know, well, she wasn't the reason, but I just had her and I was in pain. So anything related to me giving birth to her, I cried. I laid in the bed. I was depressed. I slept with her blanket. I that you know anything that touched her, um, 
I slept with it. Also, before I left Dallas, I had to make a decision if I wanted to bury her or get her cremated. Of course, I wanted her cremated so she can come back, you know, be with me all the time in Chicago. Why would she get buried in Dallas if I'm not there? So um, she got cremated, but I had to leave Dallas. So I felt guilty about that because her ashes had to be mailed to me because they couldn't do it right away, of course. So um, just when I thought I was getting some you know, some life back a little bit. Her ashes came. Oh, my God. That sent me right back into a depression. And um, I'm messed up to this day. When I say messed up, like mentally, you know, I sit in my room sometimes and just think about her. Or some things I can't think of or do without thinking of my baby girl. And it messes me up because it's three years now. It's been three years. Um, I just celebrated her third birthday, May 2nd. And um, I do something every year to, you know, remind her that she's going to always be my child. She's my daughter. Um, it hurts. I don't know if you ever get over it. Um, this is her little urn with her ashes in it. I have never, ever, 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 ever really looked inside, touched her ashes like that. Um, I did it the first year after her death, her birth death. Um, I sprayed the ashes in the water. I didn't touch them because I just can't bring myself to do it. I don't look inside. I don't do anything at all. Um, it's just hard. Um, also, the hospital I was in, they were amazing. They um, they did this little thing of her hand and foot. I'll show you guys. It's like a little, um, I don't know if you want to say little, it's just a little, I don't want to say statue or what it's called. But, oh no, I didn't know the paint was chipping. So this is her little hand and foot that they put in like cement and like molded you know it of her I painted it later um I didn't know it was chipping so I would have to redo that but yeah I keep it in this little box um they gave me a lot of keepsakes for her um this book was made by um Yada, or for those who don't know who she is, but it was made by someone for me, and you know, it's just pictures, um, you know, of my baby. You guys um, can see her. Um, yeah. So, um, my baby's name, um, Tyler Renee Suggs. That's my angel right there. Um, but the hospital, though, they gave me so much. It was like a blanket that they wrapped her in. Um, a poem. Um, more blankets. Receiving blankets. This was the little dress that they took pictures of her in um yes they still took pictures even though she was deceased which i'm glad that they did um more blankets um a picture of her with a little bear and her head on um it's just a little oh my god look at this you guys this was her diaper right very very tiny she was only one pound so everything was very tiny like it was for a doll um they gave me a whole bunch of other stuff but yes um i'm learning to cope with it i do something reminds me of her every day when i see other little girls or i see parents with their little girls it makes me think of her and how amazing and smart she would have been um, you know, 
I never thought that I would go through anything that, like this in my life, but who does? It's not something you really can be prepared for. Um, I kind of skipped over how I lost her. Um, just to go back a little bit. So, um, I went into a preterm labor because I have a condition where I have a soft cervix and it's something you don't know until you know. And, um, if and when I get pregnant again, I have to get my cervix sewn shut in, uh, at three months and kind of be on bed rest and take it easy because my cervix cannot support a growing baby. And as the baby grows, then my cervix open up and that's too early. So I have to get, I can, I can have children, but I just have to go through that procedure when I do get pregnant. So, I mean, it's bad that you don't know it until you know it, but it's good to know it for future pregnancies. Um, so that's what I have to go through. And I do plan on getting or trying to get pregnant in the future. Um, it would be just, I'm only going to go for one more baby because I have to go through so much to when I am pregnant. Um, my advice for people is really just deal with it the best way you know how. You know, recently, a year ago, well, almost a year ago, um, my brother went through the same thing. My um, sister-in-law, seven months pregnant, you know, and um, lost my nephew. You don't see it coming. You don't, it's nothing to prepare for. You just have to deal with it the best way you know how. You don't let no one tell you how to deal with it. You don't let no one tell you how long to cry about it. You don't let no one tell you that, oh, it's going to be okay. Because they don't know how you feel unless they actually went through it. And even if they did go through it and they still tell you it's going to be okay, you can only deal with it the best way you know how. I'm still dealing with it. But I choose to celebrate those two minutes she was here versus you know, be sad about it. You know, she's in a better place. I know that's cliche, but the way the world is today, she is truly in a better place. I like to say that my grandmother was stingy and wanted her up there with her for herself. You know, that's how I like to look at it. And they're up in heaven, you know, having a ball, watching over me. I just try to live my life so I can make her proud to say that's my mom. She's doing her thing, you know. So, you know, um, I just, that's my advice. Take it one day at a time. You will get through it. It makes you stronger for sure. It's like once losing a child, it's like, throw anything at me. I can, I can do it all. So trust me, you can get through it. And, um, you guys can always message me, inbox me if you have any further questions or if you just been through the same thing that I've been through and you want to know how I deal with it. Just know that I'm still dealing with it. Anyone who knows me knows me. I'm a very sensitive person. And um, I cry at the drop of a dime. I probably will cry after this video. But I did my best for you guys. I was strong. Trust me, this is the first, first time that I have told this story without crying. Um, I feel it. I feel like I'm just going to burst out into tears any moment. But like I said, I want you guys to get to know me. And that is something that is like the dearest, the closest to my heart. I love my family. I forever, 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 forever thank my sister, Precious. And I thank my mom. Y'all know my mama, Darlene. They really, you know, other people help me. Don't get me wrong. But those two right there. They truly, truly, truly helped me get through it all. And um, I know that if my baby was here, she would have been spoiled. She would have been a little diva. So, but that's it, you guys. Um, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, still look forward to more videos. I know I said I wasn't going to make none until August, but I will not be vlogging until August for sure. But I might just throw up a little videos here and there just so you guys can stay in tune with me. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to hear about, 
um, message me, snap me, DM me, whatever you need to do <laughs> to contact me, I do respond mostly, you know, I do kind of respond to everyone, um, but that's it, you guys, and I look forward to you guys seeing me more in August or in the future. Peace out, you guys.